This is Antipor Off Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm joined by Spencer Fearon here in London. Spencer, first and foremost, how are you doing? I'm really good, even better for speaking to you, my friend. How are you doing? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Obviously, it's been a while since we've had a chance to catch up. Yeah, Obviously, yeah boxing yeah, social, <laughs> boxing now, social now. I remember when you started off with your little camera. I remember when we did the interview and it was, uh, it was, uh, boy, you've been doing this for a hot minute. For 2000, I'll tell you how long you've been doing this. First time I met you, uh, Sky Studios, 2015. Yeah, it was. Yeah, when it kicked yeah. off in a... In a, in a Dillion White and AJ. White and that. Yeah, you know what I mean? And I think Dean White was going to rip your head off. Yeah. And I <laughs> saved you. Do you remember that? I saved you. Do you remember I saved yeah. you? Gaps is my guy, man. Gaps would have he just he's, he's just a very big, imposing man, but he's a sweetheart at, in, inside. He's a teddy bear, man. I think you'll be glad to know since then me and Dean have made up. We, we see each other quite a lot now because obviously Dean's floating about a lot on the scene himself. Man, De Dean's everywhere, man. He, he, he's, he's just like oxygen. Yeah, yeah tell you. <laughs> Obviously, let's let's talk about yourself. You've, you've mentioned it's been a while since we've we've last caught up. You're now with MTK. Talk to me about your role with with my, the company. My role with MTK is that I'm the head of the foundation. So the foundation we got, we help underprivileged kids, adults, uh, anyone who needs a helping hand. They send in applications to us, uh, and then we have a delegation team which is head by um, Sandra Vaughan. Um, and, and myself and Sandra, we go through and we say, like, who, who should be getting any funds and that? And then we go out and we, we've got a new scheme that's been opened up now. So um, we've got MTK Global Academy, where um, it's from 16 to 19 year olds. Um, just get poor kids off the streets, teach them the curriculum of boxing. Uh, as boxing has grown, it's grown immensely right now. So we, we try to get um, people into employment after that because there's loads of different facets. Someone could be just like you. Obviously, just move away from your role and on to as to why we're here now. It's Golden Contract semi-final week. What are your thoughts on some of the picks? Let's start off O'Hara Davies to choosing Jeff Afore. A surprise one there because everybody was anticipating he was going to go with Tyra McKenna. Or? O'Hara Davies has done a smart move. He's picking Jeff because he thinks that Jeff's going to be an easy, easy thing for him. That's what he thinks. Jeff ain't going to be an easy thing for him. I mean, if Jeff's up for it, then Jeff's going to fight. It's going to be a very entertaining fight. I'm looking forward to seeing that fight because by O'Hara's own admissions, he thinks, I picked him for, for the, so I mean, so, I mean, whoever I get in the final now, I'm going to go get in the final. But it's, that's, not an easy, that's not an easy fight for him. What was your thoughts on the picks? Would, would you have liked to have seen O'Hara face Tyrone? No, not yet. Because I, I really believe that should be a final fight, Right. And it, the, the onus now is on Tyrone to, 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 to come and be victorious in his fight, right? So if he is victorious and then him and O'Hara meet, then well, O'Hara's got to be victorious, right? And the thing about it is this, I don't care who wins or loses, you know. I'm just looking for entertaining fights because I'm coming at my house on Friday. I mean, I've, I've, I've been given a night off from, <laughs> from babysitting. So if I'm, if I'm coming at my house on Friday, I wanna, seriously, I want to see a fight. I want to see something entertaining. So hopefully I'll get that. Obviously, the other semi-final event is Mohamed Mamoun versus Tyrone McKenna. What are your thoughts on that one? You know what? I, I saw um, Mamoun box. He boxed on the on the last show, right? And I was I was impressed with McKenna, you know, because Tyrone, like, for a, for a very tall guy, what's he six six one? Yeah, something like six one, and he's he's making one hundred and forty pounds. And he, I like the way how he puts his hands together. He's got really, really good. He's a very, very good combination puncher. Um, and he goes head and body and he gauges his shots as well. He's like, he'll throw a burst. Then his opponent will come back on him. And then he'll say, well, I've got to throw another burst just to be eye catching. So he's a well thought out fighter. You know what I mean? Uh, I saw Mahmoud as well. Mahmoud's not bad. He's, he's gangly. He goes up and down. He's got good body attack. That's going to be a good fight, man. And obviously, away from the super lightweights and onto the featherweights, Ryan Walsh choosing to face Tyrone McCullough again. Was you surprised at all with that one? No. Ryan's not. Ryan is a. You know, the Walsh brothers, all three of them, they're readers, you know, they read a lot. You know, they read books, they, you know what I mean? And, and, and they're versed. And it is, it, this, is, this is not just one fight, one fight, one fight. It's playing out, this is a career changing fight. So if I can. No disrespect to his opponent, right? If I could pick up an easier scalp, then go in and progress to the final, then why wouldn't you do that? Anybody would do that. Why would you pick the hardest one first, say, oh, I'm going to get the hardest one first? You could get the hardest one first and then you're fighting again in two months. You, your body could be shot from that. So I think he's done the right thing, in my mind. I mean, I think he's done the right thing. That, that fight obviously meant that we're left with Lee Wood versus Jazza Dickens. That's a a good very fight. good fight. What are your thoughts on it? Right. Who's Lee Wood trained by? Dave Caldwell, yeah? 
Um, Dave Cole one manages him. Manages him, sure. Right, right, right. So he got a good set of people around him, right? But you see, Dickens is a handful for anyone, you know, especially when he throws in them hooks. Like he, he arches his back to, to get the full leaves and he puts the, the, the power on his front leg to, to wing in the shot. It, it, that's going to be a really good fight, you know. You know I mean, and and the next thing as well, this is a great thing about it. Boxing actually won because most of these fights, to me, that's a pick 'em. And whereas I know both fighters as well, I don't want to say nothing disrespectful. I don't know, like I'm kind of chicken in that. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not chicken out. I know both of the guys, so I don't really want to say anything disrespectful about any of them. Obviously, just to move away from this card, then just get your thoughts on a couple of other matters. This right. coming weekend, one of the biggest fights that's been anticipated for quite a while now. Wilder Fury two. Break it down for me, Spencer. How do you see it going? Excellent fight. And I can see Tyson Fury winning between 9 and 11 rounds on a stoppage and people thinking I'm crazy. And now I've said it, I think I'm crazy as well. But there's, there is, depending if Tyson Fury has not settled into being civilised and the acclaim that he's getting right now and everything else, you know what I mean? Because, you know what I mean, sometimes when fighters say, oh, well, I'm in a good place, for someone who is very erratic with skill like Tyson Fury, him being in a good place sometimes may not be a good thing. I think you need that little bit of a crazy to perform the way that you perform. I think you need that little bit of crazy for you to be out of boxing for how many years and come back against two journeymen that you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even use for sparring and then go into a fight with against Deontay Wilder. Not even Muhammad Ali couldn't even do that in the 70s, right? So he went and did that and I'm saying, right, that's a part of crazy. And since then now, Tyson Fury's become some superstar. Fighting WWE, must have got like, what was that, couple, like seven million for, for doing that. And so as long as Tyson Fury ain't civilized, then he can, he can cause something. But what I'm saying with Deontay Wilder, Deontay Wilder, I always knew, once that man knew how to throw the right hand properly, not pull it, to throw it straight down the line, guys are going to be in trouble. And you can see he's got that patient hunter's mentality now where you just wait, throw out a jab, throw out a jab, don't care that I'm losing rounds, that I just want to get the range. As long as I can get the range, I can pop that off on you. But we're looking at someone like Tyson Fury, he's actually a fighting man. So it's a great fight, but I slightly favour Tyson Fury on this if his mind's right. You mentioned you can see Tyson stopping in between 9 to 11. In the build-up, Tyson said he wants to plant his feet a bit more. He wants to kind of let his right hand go and he wants to kind of set on that. Is that a dangerous ploy to have against somebody like Deontay? Because, no, with anybody. But anybody could, with anybody, it's dangerous. Any heavyweight is dangerous, right? But if you're, you've got to think anyone over 200 pounds can punch. But it's dangerous for Tyson Fury because you're looking at Deontay Wilder who has that freakish punching power. And if you're saying you're going to let off your right hand, you're throwing off your right hand. It's not to a, off, to a southpaw fight where your right hand is going to be the first thing to connect. It has to travel that little bit longer to go and hit the target, right? Because it's your right hand from, a, from your throwing, you're fighting another orthodox fighter whose their left hand's coming out of you. You've got to go over the top of their left hand, right? Totally different now if it was a southpaw and they're leading with their right hand. And as they're leading with their right hand, you go straight through you're, 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 you're to, to the hand that's going to be parried, right? So when you're in punching range, when you are in punching range, the danger is that you're in range to get punched yourself. And Deontay Wilder's got freakishly long arms as well. And he punches like a mother. And let's call it as it is. So if Tyson Fury talk about this flat-footed thing, forget about that. He should be boxing, moving side to side, uh, picking, poking, befuddling, and stamping his authority with hard shots when he can throw him. For you, in your opinion, what fight would be bigger for an undisputed fight? AJ versus Fury or AJ versus Wilder? depending on how both guys perform on the weekend. Because if Tyson Fury did go out there and knocked out Deontay Wilder in two rounds, that's the biggest fight ever, right? Let's be real, right? But if Deontay Wilder goes out and knocks out Tyson Fury, I think more people have been more interested in seeing Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua than they have been more interest between um, Fury versus Joshua. So me being realistic, I'm saying I would want to see... Um, um, a rumble in the jungle too. Have that. The, I ain't Joshua that in Nigeria right now. Nigeria's got money like that. I'm telling you this now, right? For that fight to happen in Nigeria, I think um, that would be massive to me. I really want to see that fight. 
Find him before they let it go. Obviously, on Anthony Joshua, waiting for official confirmation for his Kubra Pulev mandatory defence. What are your thoughts on it when it is officially announced? Rob, let me tell you this. Anthony Joshua um, showed to the world, and this is why when people complain that the, his last fight against Ruiz wasn't a masterclass, it actually was a masterclass because here is a man that boxed in a style that he's not accustomed to do against a man that was actually fundamentally a better boxer than he, right? And he did, he scored Andy Ruiz, period. So therefore, we've got to give him all the credit in the world. So what that has shown me is that Andy Joshua is now putting, putting added facets in, in, in his repertoire. That makes him dangerous. So he knows that, right, I can go the regular thing and throw hard shots when I need to throw hard shots, or I can, I, I can box the orders. And he showed that he can box the orders. And also, he showed concentration for, for, for 36 minutes. So give Andy Joshua all the credit in the world, man. Seriously, Andy Joshua is a nightmare for anyone, and he will beat up Kubrick Pulev, but Pulev ain't no idiot. He can fight, man. Don't get twisted. He can fight. I remember when he beat Derek Suzora, and he handily beat him as well. Even though I think they can to give it a split decision. I don't know how that one came up, right? But he, the guy can fight. But I don't think he's got enough in the tank to deal with Andy Joshua right now, who's riding on a high. Andy Joshua's Black Panther right now, so no, I can't see it. I can't see it. Obviously, AJ has another mandatory down the line to deal with in Alexander Usyk. How do you think Alexander will fare at everywhere? I know he's had his fight against Witherspoon, but how do you see him faring as he kind of adjusts even more so to the weight? Bro, he's a danger. You know why? Because he's a learned man. You have to look at these guys who are learned people. Pul oh, sorry, Usyk is a danger for anyone. Right? Andy Joshua needs to take care of him now. You know what I mean? Get that fight. Don't let that fight build for like two years. Forget that one. Fight that man now and brack him up road style. Just rush him and beat him up. Don't let that man settle in because he's settling is going to be a danger for anybody. Spencer, we will leave there now because I know you've got somebody else waiting to speak to you. Yeah. But I appreciate your real, time. Real Good to catch up. <laughs> Good now, to catch up with you. My first, my first, this is my first interview with the new um, Boxing Social. So I'm really, really grateful that you, you, you took time out to talk to me. All right? Appreciate you speaking to us, but as always, good to catch up with you. I'm sure I'll catch up with you soon uh, and not another 18 months down the line. Thank you for speaking to myself and Boxing Social. Yeah, big up, yeah.